Uh... Hey, folks. Welcome back. I've got the great Ken Walls. Did you know that Ken did over 2,000 live streams? That's incredible. Over 2,000 live streams. Imagine that. 2,000 live streams. I mean, I don't know anybody who's done more than 2,000 live streams. So welcome, Ken. Ken, thank you. Coffee with Lisa show. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Lisa Patrick, and uh, I love to interview experts like Ken. So let's get right into it. Tell me, Ken, 2,000 live streams. Where did you start with that? Well, um, I, right now I'm looking for the live the live stream to share it out <laughs> <laughs> on my phone in case everybody's like, "Why is that dude looking down?" So um, there, I just shared it. So you know, I I I've told this story many times. Um, you know, we both are friends with Grant Cardone, and um, it was probably about. I don't know. I, I would imagine it's been five years ago or so um, that I was like, I, I kept seeing Grant going live on Periscope. Yeah, I didn't even. I have, remember those days. What, I'm like, yeah. what the hell is Periscope? I know, me too. Yeah, because yeah. I had an Android phone. In fact, <laughs> I was like the Antichrist of Apple. Like I. <laughs> I was like, I will never own an Apple product. And I, st I don't even know why, honestly. <laughs> but so this. They this, never can. It'll bite you in the butt. I know. I know. So I, I, um, I, this, this dude that worked for me kept, kept coming into my office with his stupid iPhone and he would hold it up and turn it around and go, looks like your boy's live on Periscope right now. And I was like, give me your phone, dude. And he's like, nope. And he'd walk away and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I went and got an, an additional phone. I got an iPhone. I was carrying two phones. And, and long story short, um, you know, as Grant kept saying, you've got like, look, if, if you're going to blow up in life and in your business, you got to learn how to use these live streaming platforms and blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, okay, fine. And, <laughs> and I, so I decided to, to start using um, Periscope live. And, and I remember the first time I had people in my conference room that were working for me and I, I was like, okay, um, everybody just calm down. I'm, I'm getting ready to go live. <laughs> like whatever weirdo. And I, I was like, like, no, seriously, I'm going to go live on for the first time ever on Periscope. And they're like, okay. I'm like, all right, everybody out. And I'm like, no, no, no sit down. Just wait. I was freaking out. Like yeah, I've yeah. said this a million times. I was nervous as a hooker in church. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I was. And so I, I so I went live and I was like, uh, hi, you yeah, know. What I the hell do you say? Yeah, I didn't know what to do. And so I just I just kept plugging away. I kept going. I kept watching Grant and I was watching Gary V and I was watching all these I've watched all these people over the years and and um, you know, I love inspiring people to get to the next level. Yeah. And, and, and what I love about live streaming is it gives me the ability to, to re in fact, I have a course on it. I, I, it gives me the ability to reach a lot more people than if I just have my immediate circle of, of employees or friends or colleagues or, or whatever around me. So I, I, yeah, so I've done, I don't know. I, it's somewhere in the vicinity of a couple thousand live streams across like every platform that exists. Yeah. And those live streams, the majority of them aren't just you like a fire hose. It's you having engaged conversations with experts all over the globe, talking about business and life and challenges and obstacles and being really very vulnerable in the situation. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, so Bob. How's I, it going? Uh, Bob, who is on? He says, I love this. Enjoy my coffee as I watch you. Good to hear, Bob. Yeah. I'm, I, I finished mine before we started. I need some more coffee. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, look, live streaming has changed everything for me. I, and, and, you know, I mean, and now I have my show and podcast and, and, yeah. You know, I've interviewed some. 
very pleasure to have be a guest at. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know, it was, it was my turn. So B Bob says he's doing well. Fantastic, Bob. It's good to hear. Um, so my question to you, though, is, is, and I struggled with this. I mean, we both know Hank Norman and Steve really well and you know one of the big challenges that I first had when I and I remember the first time I went live it was with a girlfriend of mine named Julia we're sitting in bed her she's at her place I'm at my place sitting in bed and we're trying to find like what's this Facebook live stuff right and all of a sudden I press the button now I'm in my pajamas and she's in her and all of a sudden we're going live and I like throw the phone I'm like oh my god we're live what do we say what do we do we didn't have a clue we shut it off real quick and then we call it oh my god we were just live what do we do now? <laughs> like right. nobody saw us really like nobody saw us. But right. having said that, it does take some time and some energy and some thought around how are you going to present yourself? What are you going to say once you turn that camera on? And I know Hank right. talks about, you know, press record, press record, hashtag press record. And the only way I think that you get better at it is by pressing record and making mistakes. And nobody, you know what? Five people might see you. Really, at the end of the day, when you first start out, what does it matter? Just press record. And I assume that's, that's right. how you did it. That's exactly what I did. And, I, and, and you know, th there were other platforms that came out that have come and gone. Um, you know, what's interesting is I was just, I, I was in San Diego. And, and, and I got to tell you, like everything that has happened in the last five years for me in business, in one way or another, um, all the positive things, it, it, I, can, I can trace it all back to going live. Yeah. And so I was in San Diego recently. I was invited to be an influencer judge on a panel um, oh. uh, for for a thing called Broadcast Your Authority. Yeah. And Mark Zuckerberg's sister was the main keynote on Friday. Her name is Randy, and she invented Facebook Live. She literally created oh. it, and she during her speech, she told the story of the first time she went live on Facebook. She's like, so here I was, I'm in, in a closet at Facebook and, and I'm like, okay, I'm going live and oh, the whole world's going to see. And she's so animated and she's like, the whole world is not going to believe this. And she goes, and two people showed up. It was my mom and my dad. <laughs> Love it. Love she it. was like, wah, wah. So like, you know, and that's, I mean, Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, Randy Zuckerberg, Mark's sister, she had two people show up. It was her mom and dad, right? Yeah, and yeah. So, like, and people, like, she goes, of course, it's grown a little bit since then. But, like, you know. Just a the, little the bit. It's grown just a yeah. little bit. Just a tad. Just a tad. And, and that's the thing is it didn't even, like it, it was Periscope, which was not even related to Twitter. Yeah. So you had Periscope and then, then um, what's the other one that came along? Um, uh, oh, what's it? Um, I can't think of it. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Where Grant Cardone used to use it all the time because you could invite other people in to take over your stream. Meerkat. 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 Yeah, that came and went. Um, there was a, a platform called Blab. Remember Blab? Yep. yep. Where you could have up to four people on. And, <laughs> and, and you know, so there's all of these things. And then Facebook finally said, and I, I knew the day that Facebook released Facebook Live to everyone. Yep. I'm like, oh, dear Lord, this is going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it just, you know what, it brings everybody into your living room. It allows us to have a cup of coffee. Bob and uh, uh, Raphael are asking us about how do we split screen here? Well, I'm using uh, a product called Ecamm. However, I'm moving to a great new product um, that Ken has graciously told me that he'll coach me with. So I'm very excited about that. I, so let's I talk will. a bit about that for Bob and Raphael. What, what product that is? Well, can I can I put a referral link in? <laughs> you, you know what? Yes, put it in the, the comments below. Yeah. We'll put it in the comments. So I, I have, so I used Ecamm, and I probably even recommended Ecamm to you. you did? Maybe, I don't know. You did. Um, and I, you know, I think it's there 80, it 90 bucks, Premier. whatever. Um, unless you live in Canada, then it's 3,000 bucks. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is in Canadian. 
Canadian dollars. It's all in America. I know. <laughs> well, we even Canada, are even Canadian superpower. companies. The, my CRM that I use, like for for emails, is, is a Canadian company, and I pay in U.S. dollars. Shut up! Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hey, terrible. I bill out to my clients in American dollars, even my Canadian clients. Wow, that's terrible. Anyway, so so Streamyard. Streamyard. Streamyard is is a phenomenal platform. I just put in. I listen. I'll, I'll full disclosure. If you use StreamYard and you sign up for it, I have an affiliate link I just posted. I make a one-time fee of $25. <laughs> but you know what's cool is anybody that signs up for StreamYard, they they give you that opportunity. You can you can so so I, I use it. It's 25 bucks a month for the small package, 47 or 42 or something for the bigger package. When I go live, I am simultaneously, sim if I can speak, simultaneously broadcasting on several Facebook pages, a couple of YouTube accounts, on Periscope, and on Twitch now, which is a gaming platform. But they're they're kind of um, Twitch is kind of moving into the speaker slash um, just regular person uh, space as well. So. Um, and, and for me, again, I, I heard Grant Cardone talk about this and it just made sense. And, and that is because people are like, which platform should I be going live on? And I always say all of them. Yeah. Anyone that you possibly can. If you can go li like, let's say you only have audiences in each in each platform at different times of the day. So it depends on the day, it depends on your audience. That's right. And YouTube is, I mean, and you're you're also dependent on all of these platforms' algorithms, which are all different, right? So if you're live on Facebook, you might have 10 people that are watching at any given time, where if you're live on YouTube, it depends on how many subscribers you have and where it is in the, in the algorithm, but you've got to use everything to get your, your if you want to get your message out. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, and you like money. If you like money, it helps. Well, that helps too. You got to spend money yeah. to make money. That's what, and you yeah. do the work, right? You've got to actually be consistent adding content all the time. And it is a lot of work. It's why a lot of people don't end up getting to that level because it is a consistent amount of work that you have to do every single day. And it's a lot of work. Creating content it is, is and, and you don't get an immediate ROI back. You know, it's hard to measure a KPI. You know, are you getting a one to one dollar back? Well, no, because it's a long term, you know, value, right? Yeah, I have like I, you know, I've done I've done a couple thousand live streams, but I've, I, I also do just videos and I post those out, too. Right. So I have thousands of video um, videos out there on on every platform with people like me and Jeffrey Gittimer, me and Grant Cardone, you and I on live streams and 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 all uh, Andy Frisella from First Form and all of these different oh, people that I've gone. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like first off, it like five years ago before I started live streaming, I was like a a um I, I, I was just a guy that built websites in Columbus, Ohio, right? So and you so, you use StreamYard, right? So yeah. what what other tools do you use so that people that are listening know what tools that they have to use besides StreamYard? I mean, you need what a good mic, a good camera. I, yeah, I have a. I recommend the Blue Yeti. Um, <laughs> I got. I, I'll come back to the Amazon thing. Remind me to tell you about Amazon. So I have the Blue Yeti, and I use a um, Logitech 4K uh, webcam. Yeah. So you know, I and it, you don't have to spend. I mean, the Yeti's a hundred and nine dollars. I think the the U.S. dollars. Um, the <laughs> the <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Um, so the um, Logitech camera, I think, is. $149 or something like that for the 4K. But like Logitech makes a cheaper camera that's mm -hmm. that's that's not 4K, but it works. 1080, 1080 works just fine. 
Um, and then, um, and, and Yeti makes a smaller $79 microphone too. So, and, uh, and lighting is really important too, because there's nothing worse than watching somebody on a live or video or anything, any, I don't care what it is. And the lighting is terrible. $50, $60. I could move my camera and show everybody what I have. Yeah. Um, but for 50 or $60, I have I have this umbrella light yeah. kit, like the white umbrella yeah. lighting studio light. I have one set up right here, right right up, like right there, and it does the job. I've tried using the little ring lights. I have one of those right here too, but then I have this little ring around my glasses. Well, and so. the, if they're too small, they don't really work. They're okay, like they give a little bit of light when you've got your phone and you're running around, right? But I have a bigger ring and I have a really big ring, and then I'll I've do, got, really. you know, I've got square lights. Yeah. But I have a smaller ring, which is about this size. So for those of yeah. you who are watching, it's about I think it's 12 or 14 inches round. And I carry it with me when I travel. It's the perfect, like if I need extra lighting, you know, it holds my phone. I can be, you know, cordless. I plug in my yeah. wireless mic and away I go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so having the right, and, and honestly, in my, um, it, I so... Jeffrey Gittimer's wife, when I had, I don't know, a couple months ago, I had Jeffrey on, we were promoting his new book, yep. um, talking to people about that. And then Grant Cardone came on and all three of us were on that live stream. Did you see that? Uh, I saw it afterwards. Okay. So it was pretty cool. And then um, Jeffrey's wife called me afterwards and she's like, you have to do a course. And I go, <laughs> What, well, I thought she was trying to sell me a course. What did I do? That, like, <laughs> I need a course. Like, she goes, no, you need to teach people how to do this because like people don't know. Yeah. And so I did, and and it's <laughs> been phenomenal. And I, as a matter of fact, today I, I'm doing some more video content to add to my course um, because I'm I'm taking it to a different level. And you have this. You have a podcast, right? And so. Uh, one of the things that Mark Zuckerberg's sister said, I'm going to mute this thing over here so she doesn't pick up my voice, is she said the the biggest opportunity for for people that own a business, entrepreneurs today, the biggest opportunities are, number one, she said, doing like a flash briefing for the Alexa voice devices, right? Alexa and the Google Home and all that. Um, that, that was the first thing she talked about. She said, number two, she said, of course, I'm biased, but doing live streaming. So you can get your message out there about who you are, what you do. And here's the cool part. And I try to explain this because I know a lot of people are like, oh, but I do videos and I have a video guy that edits all my videos and takes out all my ums and ands and uhs and, and all of that. And right. <laughs> which I watch some of my videos once in a while. I'm like, good Lord, my favorite word is, uh, <laughs> so like, like, so I'm, I'm, and it is what it is. Yeah, like, it is. Here's the thing. The difference between an edited video and going live is an edited video. If I show, send you a video, a link to a YouTube video and you watch it, you'd be like, wow, man, Ken put some bombs in the background and they were exploding and there was cool music playing like, you know, but you're going to know that was edited, right? Yeah. What you, what you don't get in an edited video is raw authenticity yeah. and raw authenticity being real is what people buy. They buy, they buy this, the energy they know if, Hey, you know, Lisa, you can't fake a booger falling out of your nose on a live stream. You can't cut that out. And it's like, oh my God, she's human. I want to yeah. talk to her. Yeah, right? exactly. Too exactly. Many people are doing the edited stuff, and it's cool. I do it too. But like, there, you also have to show your realness, your authenticity. Yeah. I didn't mean to bring up boogers on. I your didn't show. have a booger fall, but it could happen. It could happen. When I was private investigating many years ago, you know, one of the biggest things that all I wanted to do was roll down my window and yell, don't do it, you're on camera, was people picking their underwear from their butt all the oh time, my God. all the time. Like, you, really? I'm telling you, I could, I could write a book on the, on how people pick <laughs> their underwear out from their butt. 
<laughs> all the time, all the time, right? Wow. You know, and in fact, one time I caught one guy. He was doing the old and the old drop in the mouth, right? Eating his boogers, oh, and I'm like, oh, if this goes to court, buddy, you are going to be so embarrassed. Oh, like, gosh, anyways, but having said that, you can, though, I, I agree with you about the edited videos. Here's where I disagree with you, and I agree with Hank Norman. If you press record on your video and stop it and then push it as a video, you can get that authenticity and the genuineness out of it as long as you're not talking from script. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And I, I listen, I, Hank's a friend of mine. I love Hank and I agree with Hank, but I think that, that again, here's, here's another part of it that, that nobody realizes is the Facebook algorithm. And, and we can talk about YouTube live and we yeah. can talk about Periscope and all that, but the 800 pound gorilla is Facebook. Yeah. It's the largest platform in the world and y you can hate it all you want. <laughs> doesn't change the fact that it's still the largest. So, you know, the Facebook algorithm gives you preference when you're live. Yeah. You have, more eyeballs will see a live stream than any recorded video you could upload 10 times more. So like, and I've tested it. I've gone in, I've, okay, let's, let's really test this. So when you upload a recorded video, you might have a couple hundred views. If, and it depends on who you are and how many followers and all that. But, but you know, when you're going, when you go live at the end of a live stream video, you're going to see that you have more eyeballs that have seen your video and your content than than any if, other way. Absolutely. Unless you pay, yeah. unless you pay to play, unless, that's that difference. Unless you pay, unless that's you pay right. to play. Uh, recently, right. I just got told that Facebook changed their algorithm again and yeah. um, are really giving preference to those who who aren't not necessarily live streaming. We're not talking about live, but if you're not paying to play, good luck trying to find. Now yeah. your way into the streams of people it's just not going to happen um so yeah know, it's just unrealistic to think that and and i have proof of it because i pushed a lot of you know dollars and cents in facebook um, boosting posts not too long ago and then i turned everything off and literally my feed went from hero to zero overnight yep it just did overnight. So the reality is that if you, you know, if you're trying to push organically, you're not doing Facebook lives, you're, you know, and you're trying to just push content. Good luck. Yeah. It's well, I, I can tell you that, you know, again, with StreamYard, um, I'm going live on my personal page with 5,000 friends, my fan page with 50,000 fans and YouTube and everything. Right. So it, it, and, and as a result, then I can go to my fan page or my business page and I can boost it. I can yeah. do a boost and, and like, send it out to even more people. So, yeah, you know, but I, I, I told you Amazon. So um, just about to ask that because, well, because of all of the live streaming I've done, first off, I was an influencer judge at that thing with Mark Zuckerberg's sister there. And Tamara Thompson is mm -hmm. an amazing lady that puts all this together. And then I was asked to speak at a conference in Vegas to 500 entrepreneurs. Yep. Um, I'm speaking, I'm speaking in Dallas to, to at another conference. All of this because of live streaming is happening. And then Amazon actually made me an influencer. I have a blue check mark on yep. Amazon. So like, like, which is insane, right? Like, I'm like, oh my God, I, I was building websites in Columbus, Ohio <laughs> five years ago. And Amazon is now like, oh, you, you have enough clout from live streaming that we want to make you an influencer account. And that's not easy to get. No. And so like, I, I'm like, it blows my mind. So if you say, hey, what do I need for live streaming? I can give you my Amazon store <laughs> link, right? And then I then everything you buy on Amazon, I get paid for. It's unbelievable. The name of the game, and, and, though. And it's not it's not that you're trying to make money off of everybody. It is just the name of the game. Why, the why wouldn't you promote it? Why wouldn't you, yeah. you know, use those advantages? We'd all use them if we had them. Yeah, so it's, tell it's incredible. So tell me, and it's taken a lot of work, and you said that earlier. It, it does. It takes work. a lot of work and time with no pay. 
Like, let's no be pay. clear. You're not getting paid to do the 2,000 no. videos. No. You did offer me two U.S. dollars to come. I'm kidding. But actually, it was, no, two, it was two Canadian dollars. <laughs> <laughs> like 50 cents here. So, so. But having said that, though, um, you know, it is a lot of work. There's consistency. You have to do it each and every single day. Like, let's be every clear. day, every day, every single day. Yeah. I mean, you and I have been friends for a long time. You know, it's been years. I've yeah. seen, you You know, ups and downs in your business. Yeah. You know, how, yeah. where you are. I mean, I'm so proud of you where you are today. I mean, you're just you're just doing this, which is fantastic. Yeah. So I'm glad that I'm part of that journey with you. Thank you. So Same. Tell me, what is the what was the biggest challenge, Ken, that you had to overcome? Um, like I know you, you know, you've got uh, live stream courses now. You, you know, you're speaking more. You're doing a lot of coaching. So if you want to coach, this is the guy to talk about live streaming with. But what was the biggest challenge that you faced from you know five years ago when I knew you to now? And what did that you is do a great great question and i think i have a halfway decent answer um i'm kidding so look here's the thing we're all walking like you know and and i i hate to keep bringing up grant but i'll bring him up again one more time um you know he talks about that he was in a treatment center at 25 years old and broke and and on drugs and and getting cleaned up and all that well 17 and a half years ago i was a drunk and, and I have 17 and a half years of sobriety now. And, and, and so, but before I got sober, I was a, I'll, I'll keep it clean. I was not a good person. And, and I didn't realize how sick I was and messed up I was. And so I made all these mistakes, right? And continued making, even after getting sober. I mean, I spent yeah. many, many years continuing to make mistakes. I'm human. I'm making yeah. mistakes every well, day. Well, and habits, I mean, habits are hard to change, period. They are very hard, yes. Very hard. So I think that the biggest challenge for me was I was afraid to put myself out there because of my own mistakes, the fear of judgment. The fear of, ju I mean, look, you know this because of what you've done over the years. The, the fear of public speaking is greater than death the fear of death for most people. And so, you know, putting myself out there, putting a, 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 a photo of myself or a video on video or live stream, holy crap, what if an ex-girlfriend comes on and talks smack about me or, <laughs> or whatever? Hey, right? you know what? Greg Cardone told me once, he says, Lisa, if they hate me, at least they know me. Right, exactly. And that is the reality. Exactly. And I have haters and it, it it bothers me that I have haters. Yeah. Well, you were um, human. I want Nobody wants to like any me and love me. Yeah, exactly. We all want to be loved, and we all want. But the fact of the matter is, is that we cannot please everybody all the time. And I really, really believe, Ken, that the majority of life's problems falls to communication. It's an interpretation of what isn't said that causes yep. the trouble. And the hardest conversations are the ones that people should be having. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. I think, you know, so to answer your question, the biggest change for me has been, I don't care anymore. Like I will do a live stream. I'll do a live stream when I wake up first thing in the morning and my hair is standing up and I look like Don King. I don't yeah. care. Like judge me all you want. At least I'm doing it and you're not. So judge away. I don't care. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that everybody's not. There's a lot of people that do live streaming. But I think that, you know, if you can. And here's something. Oh God, we keep talking about Grant, but I'm going to bring him up again. He said, you know, look, if you have something to share with the world that you can teach somebody or help somebody by not doing live streams, by not putting yourself out there, you're just being selfish. Yeah. And I was like. Well, I don't want to be selfish. I want to help people. I want to figure out how to reach more people so I can help them. If I can reach more people, I can help more people. Yep, right? That's right. It doesn't Absolutely. mean it's going to be for everyone. Well, it's and what you know, I might be at kindergarten level and you're at, you know, first year of university. 
right? Right. So right. not just because you live and eat in this world of expertise that you know right. and you think that everybody, you assume that everybody else knows. Lots of people don't know it. They're in grade two. And you could speak yep. to them in grade three and you'd think, holy man, you blew their world up because they didn't right. know that. And you're thinking, how did you not know that? Like such a simple right. thing. But if you're living in it every and each and every day and you're, you know, that's the gospel and that's your expertise, lots of people yeah. know what you know. So share it. That's right. Yeah. I, that's correct. I'd agree. It's why, yeah, it's why we have these experts. It's why we have these influencers, right? Yeah. I just was down at Jeffrey Gittimer's house for a few days in a in a in a sales mastery intensive mastermind group um, with him and and um, Joe Soto who does Ty Lopez's marketing and and stuff or has I don't know if he's I think he still does some but um, talk about feeling like the the idiot in the room I did like I, and I'm like I got all this experience I mean I've I've trained and helped Jeffrey Gittimer and his wife with live streaming and some social media stuff. And, and, you know, Gittimer said that he's like, dude, why are you not telling the world like who you've worked with? You've helped me. You've helped my wife. You, you know, you need to. And I'm like, so, you know, again, when you have that, like you, I mean, the people you're connected with is it's crazy. Right. So like, when you have that moment of of clarity where you're like, man, you know, I, I guess I have done some pretty cool things, you know, and you start owning that and you start put it, put yourself out there. Let the world, let the world see who you really are. Yeah, I absolutely. You know? And, you know, I believe in the gift, you know, learn gift rule. And that basically is if I've got, if I've learned something, it is yeah. my obligation to you to gift that knowledge to you because yeah. it just makes everything move faster. It makes you move forward quicker. It gets to results that you need, you know, and how dare, and I do agree, you know, how dare I keep that knowledge to myself? I should be helping right. Right, and supporting. Yeah. So yeah. what's the next step for you, Ken? Like where, where do you go from here? I have some, um, so this past weekend is when I was with Gittimer, um, and I had some major, major shifts occur. Um, I can't really go into full disclosure on everything right now, but I, I have some really, um, really cool stuff that I'm, I'm planning, especially revolving around, you know, look, I, I have always loved to be a teacher. When, when I was one of the largest home security dealers in the United States, um, I had a huge sales team and I trained other dealers and their salespeople um, on how to sell, go door to door and sell home security systems. And, and I, I always loved the teaching part of it more than anything. And I love inspiring and teaching people how to do what they're unaware of doing. So my focus has shifted in the last week, <laughs> probably <laughs> more towards um, helping people learn um, it more towards that than than anything else. So I've got, you know, I, I'm going to put a lot more work into my courses and 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 delivering that material. Um, you know, I've done website stuff for ever 26 years so that's kind of second nature we still do those but uh, my focus is really going to be on on delivering courses excellent excellent well, i love yeah. some of those courses yeah so here's the thing we talked a lot about sales and and you know everybody in what i believe everybody is a salesman and i was just on a recent podcast with uh my good friend larry levine selling from the oh nice you know, we talked a lot about, you know, authenticity, genuine, you know, yeah. what we're talking about today. And here's the thing. Every single person is a salesperson. And I don't care yep. if you are an executive, if you are uh, selling, you know, podcast equipment or whatever you're doing, you're always right. in the business of sales, whether you're selling yourself or you're selling a product or you're selling a service. So I really believe that you have genuinely mastered the business of selling yourself live. I have? 
You have. I'm working on it. I believe, and I believe, and I believe that you are going to gift that knowledge to the world through great, through great courses. Here's the thing: I think that most people forget it, and I'm not talking about a sales cycle, but I'm in talking about a communication cycle. Is that it's not about you; it's about the person that's sitting there. And so you've got to find a way, and it doesn't mean that you have to change who you are. It means that you have to adapt the style of communication that you're using to meet the other person, to meet their needs. Yep. It's, you know, like Dr. Tony Alessandro says, practice a platinum rule. And when you practice a platinum rule, not the golden rule, so treat others how they'd like to be treated, that's right. when authenticity and genuinicity comes through. I truly, genuinely believe that. I think that people have, um, you know, I, you see it on, on Instagram especially. Um, like, you know, you'll see... And, and no offense, I know Hi, that there are 20. Linda, Linda's telling you, two of my faves I, right here. <laughs> I love Linda. She's one of my besties. So, you know, but, you know, there there are probably 20-year-olds that own Lamborghinis, mm -hmm. um, but not that many. <laughs> and, and you see, you know, it's like the, the social media has created this, um, this world of, of how fast, fake can you be to get to the top and you know the whole that like it's taken the fake i mean fake it till you make it i i heard that i don't know if it was from zig ziglar or whatever many years ago like he meant like you know yeah well, fake obsessed. it till you make it 25 years ago is a lot different than fake it till you make it today <laughs> i mean there's it's completely out of context oh my gosh like he meant like hey don't go into the next <laughs> sales call upset that you missed the previous one like fake it you know like be happy fake it if you have to yeah. not fake it by going and buying a three hundred thousand dollar car that you can't afford like so you know i think that again we have lost the um we've lost the art of authenticity of just being real i i don't and i don't even know if that's an art like just be real man like what yeah. Why do you have to Don't just you, be real? So, you know, a, a while ago, I, um, I was having a conversation with a younger friend and she was in, in her 20s. And we were talking, she's like, well, how do you, you know, how do you navigate through life? Like, you know, I'm worried about what my friends think. I'm worried about, and I said, look, lots of things happen in life. And it is only experience that you come to the realization that you just don't care anymore. What you think in your right. 20s looks very different than in your 30s, which looks very different in your 40s. And, you know, and I'm yeah. fast approaching my 50s. And I'm sure that I'm going to have, you know, wisdoms in, in that cycle of my life. But here's the thing. You shouldn't care at any given time about what anyone thinks. What you should care about is what you think about yourself, first of all. Yep. And what your close family, how are you portraying who you are to them? And, you know, recently I had a major fail. You know, you and I have talked about, you know, a, a fail a fail but a success at the same time and you know it rocked my world a little bit you know it put me into bed for a few days um, worried about where do I go from here I could not see what the next step was going to be and for me who really is a results driver and, and I'm very heavy on execution I struggled yeah. a great deal of it with that but here's the thing that got me out of bed is what am I showing my daughters by laying here and giving up and curling up and saying, you know what, I'm done. I don't know what the next step is and I don't really care. What am what role model am I actually giving to them? What to, to yep. roll over and play dead? That's that's not a role model. That's not something that I've ever lived, eat, or breathe, or the words even come out of my mouth generally. So I think right. you have to be in order to really get to that next level and, and not care about people is you have to really understand who you are at the core. And when you understand who you are, you can practice that each and every day. And you won't care. You will press record and you won't care what anybody thinks because chances are when you first start, there's only two people watching if you're lucky anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> like Zuckerberg's parents. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Right. Like, like, and that's the thing is, is uh, failure 
I, again, there's so many, there's all these cliches about failure is not failure if you're learning and blah. No, it's failure. Like, I, I like you failed, like accept it. It's okay. Cause yeah. everybody, you know, on this planet has failed, failed. everybody yeah. stop beating yourself. I, I'm going to tell you when I first got sober, I had a, um, a sponsor in the recovery program I was in and, and I was like the king of beating the crap out of myself for anything. And he was like, dude, would you settle down? Like alcoholics don't know a difference between a broken shoelace and a death in the family. Like put the bat, the ball bat down, yeah, quit yeah. beating the crap out of yourself. Like poop occurs. <laughs> <laughs> like it just <laughs> happens, right? <laughs> like let it go, man. Move yeah. on. And oh, but everybody's going to judge me. So what? Yeah. So what? I love people judging me. That means they're leaving other people alone. Judge away. Yeah. Like we all fail. I am 51 years old and I have screwed up way more times than I've succeeded. I mean, well, you learn from those times. You know what? The, the knowledge that I gained and all the expertise right. that I gained um, even though it wasn't a success and you know what I'm damn successful you're damn successful and you know what success doesn't necessarily have to mean how many dollars are in your pocket although right. it helps don't get me wrong but there's different nice levels gig. of success and I think yeah. everybody when you're first starting out you need to realize that that just because somebody says you are successful or you're not successful doesn't necessarily have to equate to dollars and cents. It doesn't. But does. Look, it's a nice gauge. If, yeah. if, if everything, you know, and I just posted something about this last night, like you just have to keep going. Like, you, you know, take, take a minute, take a deep breath and, and go, okay, I'm, I'm like, Hey, my buddy, Dr. Doug McCloy just hopped on. He literally just tried to call me too. Hey, Doug, <laughs> so, how's it going? He's like, he probably is like, Ken just sent me to voicemail. He must be live right now. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but like, you know, like just take a minute, take a deep breath. Remember that life is meant to be enjoyed, man. Like too many people are, are meandering through life being all serious and, oh, I got to, you know, like, dude, relax, man, have fun, like, and, and enjoy the process. There's going to come a time and I know this. And and if not, then hey, at least I gave it everything I had. But the time will come when I when I hit it, when I get it and I go, that's the magical formula I've been looking for. Oh my gosh, you know, it's it'll happen if I keep pushing forward and I keep failing and I keep getting back up. It's gonna happen. It's like learning how to walk. I love Tony Robbins' analogy of that. You you know, where he says, What do we do? You know, a baby keeps falling down, falling down. We go, all right, that's enough. We're, we're shutting this down. You're not going to learn how to walk. That's it. Forget it. No, the baby keeps falling down, gets up, gets up, gets up. I mean, that's yeah. what we have to do. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's it. Yeah. And, and you know what, and you just have to find the courage to do it. That's the other thing. And, that's and not everybody is built that way. Clearly, um, you know, not everybody has the courage to keep moving forward. That's why, yeah. you know, there's only 3% of the world that are highly successful. Yeah. It's because yeah. they have the tenacity, the perseverance, and the persistence to keep moving forward. Yeah. And they follow up in their sales cycles. That helps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. But I that always helps. just say, you know what, you have to follow up consistently, 100% with the people that you know, like, and trust, and the people that you don't know, like, and trust, um, that you're trying to build relationships with, because they're not going to do it. So, you know... Right. Like David Lee Jensen says, Lisa, you are truly the queen of persistence. But I do believe that you have to be persistent every each and every day. And I'm persistent yeah. for my clients each and every day. But the bigger picture is, you know, when you're meeting new people, and that's what's great about live streaming, is that you get to make an engagement with somebody. You actually make to get to make a connection. But a missed yes. opportunity is no opportunity, number one. And number two, if you don't have a connection with somebody, how can you ever give them an opportunity? Yep. It's just totally that agree. It's that simple. And an opportunity, well, told, yeah. nobody could resist. Right, right. So you've got I, I think you've got alive. You, what's that? 
I say you have to network, you've got to do lives, you you know, these are the things that are going to propel your business forward. And if you don't think that that's not part of your strategy for your business development, you're very mistaken. Very. Totally agree with you. I, I, I don't care what, I, you know, I told a buddy of mine, um, this dentist friend of mine, he's, he's my dentist too. Um, but I, I told him I was at his office, la I think last week for a cleaning. And I said, dude, you need to do a, a, a show. And he said, what? And I said, a show, a Facebook live show that's a podcast. Yeah. And he's like, what? And I'm like, look, man, the, this is a competitive industry that you're in. There are, you know, 20 other dentists within a one mile radius of your office. You need to separate yourself. What is it that you can do outside of standing out on the street corner dressed as a big tooth or something like <laughs> um, like what can you do to separate yourself and make yourself the expert? And, and I think a lot about that. I, I had this um, professor sitting next to me. I, 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 I mean, I'm very transparent. I walked out of high school in the 12th grade because they said I didn't get a biology credit that I needed, apparently. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. I hated biology. And they're like, <laughs> well, you need it to graduate. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm not graduating uh, yeah. later. And, and so, but I sat next to this um, college professor on the airplane flying to Vegas when I spoke out in Vegas recently. Um, and we had this conversation. I said, and he had a PhD and I said, well, where did, so, and he's in, he teaches business. And I said, well, have you owned a business? And he's like, no, I'm like, what are you teaching then? What's it based on somebody else's book? Like that's 30 years old or 10 years old or whatever. Like business changes rapidly, rapidly. today, especially. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, so, so, you know, what we're, what we are living is literally what we've learned from somebody else that learned from somebody else that learned. And, and, you know, we, we do have the, the luck of running into people once in a while that have done the hands-on been in the field. Like, yeah. you know, I can tell somebody how to go knock on doors residentially and business to business because I've done it thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> I can tell somebody here's how you do a live stream and engage your audience and get shares and all that because I've done it thousands of times. So like, you know, just pay attention to who you're getting your information from. You know what? Right. That's so smart because nowadays everybody is a guru. Like I just recently had a conversation with this <laughs> gentleman and he was telling me, well, Lisa, you know, I'm the number one expert in sales. I'm like, Oh really? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. How did There's you to, to, you know, to be determined that you were the number one person in sales? Well, my client told me, Dude, just because your client told you doesn't make you an expert. Right. Like, right. it doesn't make you an expert. Stop telling everybody you're a number one expert in sales because it right. makes you look foolish. Because you're not. You're not. You're telling me that you're better than Jeffrey Gittimer? Like, you're not. You just don't have that area of, you just don't have the track record, the reasons. Right. Right. So we do have to be, right. you're absolutely right. We have to be careful as to who are we getting the information from and we have to do our due diligence and really find out, are they truly the expert? Do they really have the expertise to help us to get the results that we need? It's one thing to do the work. You could do the work. You can, you know, do all the plugging and everything that you need to do. But execution doesn't mean expertise. Execution means you just knew how to plug the buttons. Doesn't mean that you had the right. expertise to do it the right way. And I think a lot of people right. get confused with that. I I, I agree. But I, and, and again, you know, you have to make sure. Like my buddy, Doctor McCloy, runs a cert, many surgical centers down in Jamaica. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to go to a an eye surgeon um, that that said, well, I've, I've, you know, I've been watching these other guys perform, um, online the eye surgeries. And I think I have, you know, uh, I think I have it figured out like what? No, dude. No, you're going to go see away. Doug. Yeah. You got to make sure that you're, you're, you're getting your information from the right source. That's all. And, 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 you know, I, I mean, Hey, we've all made the mistakes of, I have, I've made the mistake of, of, 
trusting somebody and moving my family across the country and then just to find out that, you know, I shouldn't have. And, and, you know, I mean, we've all made these mistakes of, of following the wrong people. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. It happens. And, and you, that's part of the, the mistake thing. That's just like, okay, you screwed up. Now pick yourself up and move forward. And, 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 and you would have learned something from that. Just like I've learned from some of the mistakes that I've made around those situations as well. Yep. There are still nuggets that you can take away that you can apply later. So yep. I never really consider it any longer a fail. I consider it a learning experience to move to the next. That's it. That's all it is. And so, That's it. you know, somebody tells you you're a failure, tell them to go blow smoke up there. You know what? Like, it's just the reality of it. All right. <laughs> That's it. Well, very good. Well, we're it. getting close to our, our hour. And, and as always, wow. I have to ask you one more thing. If you were to yep. give yourself ad advice to your younger self, what would that be? How much younger self? In your 20s. <laughs> like, in my 20s, I, you know, the advice I would give myself is, 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 learn how to accept failure as it just is part of the journey. I, I see so many people beating themselves up and they won't, you know, it's like, uh, well, I'm not going to press the go live button or the press record um, because of fear primarily. And the fear is 100% based around you're afraid of people coming on and judging you based on stuff you think that people are thinking about. And that's the thing is, I don't think people are actually thinking about me that much and as much as I think that I, that they are right. And, and, and as you get older and you go through life, you're like, okay, like all of those things that I thought were going to happen, don't they don't actually happen it's very very rare that the bad things we think are going to happen actually occur so you know i would just say hey younger self um first i would have told myself to stop drinking way before i did um that would have saved me millions of dollars but um you know i would say look you're going to make mistakes man that's part of the deal like that's part of the deal you can't get out of life without making mistakes. It's just not real. So, you know, accept it. Don't beat yourself up. Don't just like let it go and move forward. Keep pushing, make mistakes, make bigger mistakes, yeah. right? Like, like I, I went live and, 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 <laughs> you know, my shirt fell off or I don't know. I, I'm just I like, pressed record okay. and I was sitting in bed. <laughs> right. So do it again, you know, like do it again Yeah. in bed. I don't care. Just do it again. It doesn't matter where. So just, just keep pushing forward. That's all. That's, that's what I would tell them. Like, you're going to screw up, dude. Like, well, accept it. thanks, Ken. Uh, thanks everybody who's tuning in. And for those of you who are going to be watching later, uh, we're on YouTube, uh, as well as you can go to Ken's Ken walls at dot com. Right. Ken. KenWalls.com Ken yeah. uh, to find Ken. And uh, thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your cup of coffee. Thanks, Lisa.